to his lead every lap from Six pole. Speed. Six pole. Oh, it's across awesome. the track. Speed turn. What happened? He just lost it there. I'm on board with our wonderful thermal shot. Look at this. It's like a video wow, game. Wow. Big luck of that. Liquid rubber everywhere. Yeah. They are absolutely together on this first lap. This is the challenge. As they stream around. Was very, very full. DD dive through on the inside. He's going for it. And he's done it. He's done it. He has it. My goodness, he has it. Wow. A great sporting rivalry. And look at this. Oh, 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 oh wow. There's a terrific spread now. Well, this could all end up. This could all end up in a very large pile of fiberglass. Tries again at exactly the same point. Really, he better be careful because he's signalling his intentions now to the leader, who will be very careful to shut the door in advance. Car is coming down. Car is spinning off of the third four right now. Three cars. One of them is going to be in the gravel. The MP2 of Jason Simpson takes over the top of the top. Peter Burton is going to try to slide into the second. They were side by side. Third number one. Great racing here. Turn up the volume, enjoy the start. There's the green flag. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, oh. <laughs> he off. Oh, yikes. Yikes is right. <laughs> that goes right around the outside of the Nice and friendly pass. We'll watch Peter Burke in the Formula Enterprise. The field has come set. The Turn up the volume the and get ready for the start. Let's go. Nice. Here comes the field. Let's introduce them to you for race group number six. These are the Wings and Slicks formula cars. And we've got uh, 13 of them in the field today, as that's a, down a couple from where we were yesterday. In the only Club Continental in the field, starting in row seven, is the 71 of Rex Gunning from the Western Ohio region in his Van Diemen. Outside of row six is the fifth place FE2 car, the number 51 of Jeremy Swank from the Ohio Valley region. Next to him is the only Sports 2000 in the field, the 47 of Glenn Jivenen Jr., longtime competitor and his Carver out of the Western Ohio region. In row 10 on the outside, the third place from the Continental is the 12 of Dr. DJ Galifa from the uh, Erie, Pennsylvania area, and his Mazda. Next to him is the only prototype two in the field, the 31 of Jack Baruth from right here in Mansfield in his Radical. In row four on the outside, the second place Formula Atlantic, in fact, both Formula Atlantics in row four. The second place car is the 14 of David Blakey out of the Indianapolis region in a Swift. And the pole sitter is the 34 of John Wilhelmy from the Indianapolis region in a Furman. Uh, in row three on the outside is the second place Formula Continental, the 89 of Chris Campanale from the Detroit region in a Van Diemen. And the fourth place Formula Enterprises two, the number 91 of Jimmy Dye from the New York region in his FE2 Mazda, of course. The former Continental Pulse Center starts outside of row two. That's the number 11 of Taylor Stein from the Detroit region in an Alon DPOA. The top three are all from Formula Enterprises two. Uh, starting third is the 95 of Peter Burke from the Detroit region. And on the front row, car 98, that's Jim Lebecco from the New Ohio region. And the uh, Pulse Center the overall and in FE2 is the 77 of Vaughn Mishko from the Land O'Lakes region. Vaughn and Jim had a great race yesterday. They were nose to tail. Normally, Jim kind of runs away and hides in these races, but Vaughn uh, kept him honest yesterday. Yeah, that was a pretty good race yesterday, so we're looking for more of the same today. We're showing the uh, debris flag right now here at the top of the hill at five. As we still have that gravel uh, that's uh, different parts here through the S's, so uh, I don't think it'll impair too much as most of that is on the uh, outside of turn six where most of that came out. So. Might be gravel through the S's? Gravel through the S's? No, well, that's the gravel towards the back end. We're in Fort Thunder Valley. So not the typical racing line here. Uh, so we'll look to get this one underway. We'll uh, look for a good race between uh, Mishko and Lebeko at the front of this one in FE2. Safety car just now coming into view as they climb the hill toward the entrance to turn 11 with the white number 40, 77 of Von Mishko and the orange and black number 98 of Jim Lebecco. Everybody catching up and lining up two by two as we get ready to drop the green here for this 13 lap or 25 minute race. Assuming no yellows, this one will go down quickly. This will be our fastest race class here this weekend with the pole time in the mid 126s. Waiting on the green and there it is, Von and Jim just about side by side and 91 of the oh, here we go. a good run as he dies down to the inside.
inside, making it three wide, and I think he slotted into third as Lebeko right on the tail of Juan Mishko as they head to up toward the keyhole for the first time. Mishko is still at the advantage, but uh, it looks like Lebeko is going to try to go around the outside at the keyhole as we lose sight of them briefly as they take that downhill 180 degree right hander and come off of it. Mishko is still with the lead. Lebeko in second. And a bit of a gap back. I'm pretty sure that's still Jimmy Dye in third. So a great start for Dye as he started back in row three. Go ahead, Rusty. Wait now. They pop into view. It is Mishko, then Lebeko. We'll get the rest of the uh, numbers as they come by. It is uh, Dye in that third spot. The 34 Formula Atlantic. Uh, okay, go slow to the corner. Fourth right now. Then the Continental, uh, the number 11 of Taylor Stein in fifth. So uh, we'll watch that. So a little mix there at the front, but good uh, race at the front between Mishko, Lebeko, and then a little bit of a gap of back to Jimmy Dye. Juan Mishko with the lead as they climb up out of Thunder Valley through turn 11. Lebeko about five or six car lengths back. Jimmy Dye another 10 or 15 car lengths. And then the former Atlantic leader, as you mentioned, John Wilhelmy, who took the win in that class yesterday. As they come across the line to complete race lap number one. We've got a special guest in the uh, commentary booth with us, uh, Al Hostetler from Alliance Auto Sport. I was looking, Al, and I believe all the Formula, the FE2s save one are from your stable? Yes. Maybe they're all from your stable. I'm no, sure. they're not all from our stable, but we support them all. Peter Burke, I believe, is still at a little disadvantage in that he doesn't have the Sedev transmission yet. Got it. So he's at a little bit of disadvantage. Uh, the 77 car out front is a resurrected. It got on the pole here at the Super Tour. We just rebuilt it yeah. from Iraq. It's back, and Vaughn uh, is good driving. Effie's in the east. Right. Now he's over here with some of it. Awesome. And then the third place car is a rental car of ours also. Good. And then Jeremy Schwenk's in a rental car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had another guy here. He's a doctor. He had to go to work today, so he couldn't <laughs> race today. I gotcha. That's Dr. Galifa, of course. No, no. No, he's in the field. I'm sorry, the other doctor. No, yes. Dr. John Wappel. That was it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Big slide from Lebeko as he came off of turn four. Almost put it in the uh, grass here uh, coming around turn four, but he caught it. But uh, he's pushing, but cannot make up any ground on Mishko. And that little bobble here uh, probably cost him uh, a couple of tenths. Not much in the way of the interval. He was about uh, eight tenths of a second back, and now it's seven tenths as Lebeka, who, despite that little wiggle, sets the fast lap of the race, Rusty. So he isn't uh, too far off. Jimmy Dye lapping uh, a couple of seconds slower, 31 three, so a whole long to third. And uh, the Formula Atlantic of John Wilhelmy in the fourth spot. Taylor Stein leading Formula Continental in fifth. So the top three all Formula Enterprises, and then uh, an Atlantic, a Continental. And then Peter Burke in the Formula Enterprise number 95, that purple car, rounds out the top six. But Lebeko is setting fast lap of the race at a 27-7. Qualified at a 26-3, but it's still early days. Now I'm sure it takes a lap or two to get the tires up to temperature on these cars before they can really set off on a quick lap. Yeah, it, it does a little bit, but Jim has some sort of knack that he can run when they're cold. Yeah. <laughs> He can turn laps fast, both in the spec and in this car. Right. Well, our hopes go out to him to, to get that SRF uh, rebuilt in time for the runoffs coming up in a few months. So. Here comes the leaders once again. This race going down at a Toro pace. Again, these are the fastest cars here this weekend. Mishko doing a great job continuing to show the way to Jim Rebecca as they come across the line. We'll see the interval as Mishko sets fast lap of the race at a 26.8. Lebeko sets a personal best at a 26.8. They're only separated by three hundredths of a second in lap time. Jimmy Dye getting into the low 129s. Then Will Harvey with the former Connell leader of Stein right behind him. Lap four, lap four, lap four. Yeah. This battle on the racetrack, it's not for class, is between Peter Burke in the uh, purple number 95 and Chris Campanale in the number 89. Campanale running second in Formula Continental, Burke running fourth in FE2. They're only half a second apart. David Blakey in the second of the 
front of the Lennox in the field, and the number 14 is another three quarters of a second back. Leaders in front of me, big wheel spin that time out of the field. Got a battle behind you right now, so you're okay. Maybe I'll stop here and get behind. To about two car lengths as they leave my sight. I think maybe he just banged it off the curb a little bit here, and uh, the rear end spun up on him. So we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, there's definitely a good uh, race there with Campanale and uh, David Blake, who's uh, in that other Atlantic. So they were nose to tail here. Well, the overall leaders really with a big lead uh, after the last lap, the third place runner, Jimmy Dye in the 91, was nine seconds behind these two as they continue to shadow one another. LaBecca now takes fast lap of the race as he's into the eight, the sixes, a 126.8, as he closes down to about half a second, just about four tenths on his teammate, Von Mishko. Then Jimmy Dye, as he continues to drop a little further back, but he's staying ahead of John Wilhelmy in that front of Atlantic, number 34, as that Furman showing the way to Taylor Stein in the Furman Continental leading number 11. Maybe half a second to a second. Here's David Trevet in the number 47. The car that normally runs uh, uh, the Glenn Jimmons Jr. David Trevet in the car again today. Go ahead, Russ. Lebecco right underneath the rear wing coming off the straightaway. It's still that close. A couple of feet between those two cars. Lebecco shadowing peaks down to the inside to the top of the hill at eight but has to back off, so I don't think he's going to make that uh, pass happen up there. Another good uh, race we talked about with uh, Campanale and Blake, David Blake in the Atlantic. Uh, they were side by side coming off the straightaway. Lebeko right on the gearbox of Mishko as they come through the carousel this time. Lebeko probably getting a little anxious as he uh, set the fast lap of the race a lap ago. Re uh, does not reset it as it's just marginally slower on this lap, but he is right in the rear tracks of the right number 77 of Von Mishko. As we'll watch for that battle to continue throughout the race. They uh, finished in the inverse order yesterday, Lebeko taking the win, but it was only about a tenth and a half separating the two of them at the line as they were nose to tail pretty much the entire race with the order reversed. So. We'll see if Mishko can hold off the veteran Lebeko as they're work, we're working race lap number six, approaching half distance already. Here. That's six, that's six. Lebeko not close enough to make that pass at the top end of the straightaway. Putting himself in the mirrors inside, outside of Mishko, but uh, drops back about a car length. He may be setting up Mishko for a pass. Can't really do that when you're Underneath the rear wing of the car in front, you get some arrow wash, and then you just can't uh, keep the momentum rolling, so uh, you need to give yourself a little bit of a gap if you're going to try a pass. The battle pretty much status quo. Maybe three car lengths separates the two of them as they bend it into the sweeping right-hander that is the carousel turn. And a little left jink onto the front straightaway, both of them right out to the edge of the Gators' teeth, using up all of the track. Into turn one, line astern, about two car lengths back. Mishko sets fast lap of the race at a 26.3, just a couple tenths off his qualifying time. Tell us about Jimmy Dye. What's his story? I don't, I don't recall seeing him here before. Yeah, I was just trying to tell you a little bit of, on him. This is his first time in NFE. He's been running uh, Skip Barber and Berto Rules. Yeah. And now he's come out here to plan on racing with Hudson Bunch in the FE. And you see, he's doing pretty good already. Yeah, no question. Well, he finished third in class yesterday as well, fourth overall. So he's up one spot from where he finished in yesterday's race. Holding off John Wilhelmy, who finished in front of him in yesterday. So Jimmy's doing a great job, obviously, at the beginning of his career. So uh, good on him. Now, this is his first SCA race. Wow. Nice job. He's, he jumped off into the deep end, I'll tell you. <laughs> Racing in the fastest class here this weekend. Big gap in the front this time by. Mishko is able to stretch it back out. It was about 10 car lengths on the straightaway. Up into the carousel turn. If anything, Mishko's got a little more of a lead than he had a lap ago. 
will be four car lengths instead of three as we are officially into the second half of this race completing race lap number seven working at race lap number eight right now it's jimmy die in his first scca race ever that's quite an uh, quite an accomplishment we are halfway halfway through this session Staying in front of, uh, in theory at least, a more potent form of Atlantic car by uh, John Wilhelmy. Lap eight. Much other battles in real close contention. The only interval is other than the lead battle, less than a second, is between Taylor Stein in the red number 11. That's the former Continental leader in fifth, and Peter Burke in the FB2 number 95, the purple car, with about three quarters of a second back. Oh, you mentioned that the uh, younger, younger cars did not have the new uh, Sabev sequential gearbox. How much of a difference is that lap time wise? Oh, I, I think it all depends on the driver. Some guys uh, can run just as fast. Yeah. It was supposed to be benign to both of them. Yeah. Uh, reliability was the big key okay. factor. Exactly. You never saw a big difference, because uh, usually the guys ran about the same place they did with both of them. Yeah, yeah. The interesting thing about uh, Ron Outbleed has a coach on the radio. Ah. Jim does not have the radio. <laughs> Doesn't need one. <laughs> so there's a little bit of difference there. Yeah, yeah. He wants to be coached on the number of laps and where to go and why and stuff. Mm -hmm. Jim's just doing his thing. <laughs> I can't tell you how impressed I am with Jimmy Dye. Man, that is a, I had no idea. I just, it was a name I had not seen before. And I can see why. If this is his first ever SCCA race, uh, he's doing a fantastic job. Very solidly in third spot. He's 23 seconds behind the more experienced guys in front of him, but he's holding off the rest of the FE2s and uh, both former Atlantics, both former Continentals. So that's a great job. And yeah, he's really excited to be racing. I'll bet. Well, Becco closes it right up again, uh, almost team in contact there under brakes at the top end of the straight, so they are nose to tail once again as they beat my sight. So, Becco, uh, I saw him push the car early, and I think he uh, tires maybe. Uh, he may be overworking them in a few spots, which is why he might be dropping back from lap to lap, but uh, now he is right back uh, underneath the uh, rear wing. Taking a lap or two maybe to cool him off a little bit, get a little more. Car does look to be a little skittish as he comes onto the front straightaway. Of course, he's in the air wash of the car in front. Uh, any downforce race car, obviously, the disturbed air coming off the leading car takes downforce away from the front of the following car. So it's harder to follow closely in these FE2 cars than it would be, say, in a Formula F, which uh, don't have the wings. Lebeko set fast lap of the race and both he and Mishko are into the 25s, which is faster than they qualified early this morning. How's that battle looking, Rusty? He should be in front of you. Hey, man, to my view, about uh, six or seven car lengths. Uh, it's going to leave my view at about five. Right in front of them, though, David Trivet and then F2, they're going to have to get around him, uh, probably down in Thunder Valley. Ten, lap ten. Trivet doing a great job of staying out of the way of that battle, although now he's interposed in between Mishko and Lebeko, but Jim Tay goes around the outside as they make the run down toward the carousel turn, so it cost him maybe a little bit of time, but uh, he seems to have the pace to make it up, so let's see. They had an was about seven tenths of a second as Trivet, running 13th and last in the only sports two in the field, goes first car to go a lap down. Rex Gunning and Dr. DJ Galifa having a nice battle between the two of them again for two different classes. Gunning in the uh, multicolored number 71 Club Continental and Dr. Galifa in the uh, number 12 Formula Continental. They're about three quarters of a second apart and they've been, been there pretty much all race long. Jimmy Dye being caught now as John Wilhelmy in the front of Atlantic beginning to click off some quick laps and he's closed up 
in the battle for a third over at. In theory, all things being equal, the Atlantic should be faster. But, uh, like I say, Jimmy doing a fantastic job in that FE2. And since it's so well prepared by the folks at Alliance Autosport, it obviously should be uh, maximizing its potentials. Small commercial. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> He's probably not listening. <laughs> Here comes that battle between Gunning and Galifa as they stay separated by about eight tenths of a second. Now the lead battle comes back into our view. About status quo. Vaughn Mishko doing a great job in that white number 77, holding off the more experienced Jim Lebeco in the 98. Lebeco resets fast lap of the race at a 25 3. So he's a little quicker, but not by much. About a tenth of a second, the difference in lap time. As both of them, as the fuel burns off, the car gets lighter and they get a little faster. Well, Helmy got around Jimmy Dye on the straightaway on that uh, last lap, so uh, they're going to be a change now for third. As Jimmy Dye now back to fourth. Jimmy's still third in his class, for sure. Well, Helmy has been leading from the Atlantic since the drop of the green. Finally getting by Dye. Then there's the leader in front of the Continental, Taylor Stein in the red number 11. Peter Burke in the purple number 95 FE2, then David Blake in the other front of the Atlantic. 12, 12, left 12, 12, 12. Look at that. Have anybody coming up behind you? The FA is too far behind. You should be fine for the rest of the race. We're working race lap 12, so we expect to see the white flag next time by as we wait for our leaders to come into view. Here's the last two cars on the lead lap, and then, yeah, Juan Mishko with a big lead now, as uh, Lebeco may have made a little boobery. I don't think they have any traffic to contend with. As Mishko has stretched his advantage now, as he comes to the white flag, one lap to go. Last lap, last lap of this session. Lebeco at a 26-1 on that last lap. Mishko setting fast lap of the race at a 25-3. So, Lebeco lost about a second on that last lap, a mistake at some point, at some point, I guess. So, heading to the checkers next time by, Mishko appears to be in command. Twelve of the eleven cars will stay on the lead lap. Jimmy Dye coming back at the Formula Atlantic, a John Wilhelmy. As it looked like Wilhelmy, once he made the pass, was going to try to disappear, but Jimmy Dye staying right with him. As they come across the line, Wilhelmy in third, Dye in fourth. Guy sets his personal best at a 27.5. Will Helmy's last lap is a 28.2. So we're only six tenths apart. Guy's got a shot for a third overall. Last lap, last lap. Come here. Lebeco uh, trying to close in, took a different line here through the S's, but he's not going to make up this gap before they come back around. 1.4 seconds last time by. It looks like it's about a second right now. So uh, it looks like Mishko should have clear sailing to the checkered flag. Here comes Dr. Galifa and Rex Gunning, the last two cars on the lead lap, and then there is the white number 77 of Von Mishko, and he's going to take the win, unless something disastrous happens in the final turn and a half here. On to the front straightaway he comes, and well done. Checkered flag is out, checkered flag on 77 white. Well done to Von Mishko as he takes the win over Jim Lebeco. Lebeco sets fast lap of the race on the last lap of the race, a 125-341. About a tenth quicker than Mishko on that last lap. Here comes the lapped car of David Trevet in the number 47, Carver Sports 2000, run most frequently by Glenn Jibbity Jr. And then here comes the former Atlantic leader, John Wilhelmy, still in front of Jimmy Dye on debut this weekend. Jimmy Dye coming home third in class, fourth overall. Great job for Jimmy. Well done, congratulations. And Taylor Stein taking the win in front of the Continental for the second day in a row. And then right behind him, Peter Burke in the number 95 FE2 for fourth in class. There's the second place from the Atlantic, the yellow and blue number 14 of David Blake. Chris Campanale coming to finish second in front of the Continental in the 89 car. And right behind him, the 51 of Jeremy Swank, local driver from Mansfield. In the number 51 FE2, as he'll take fourth place honors in class. Al Hassettler, thank you for coming up to share your uh, 
infinite amount of knowledge about all things FE2 and SRF. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, a bucket list. I've listened to you and Rusty for years. Now that we've talked, and this was just kind of cool. Um, I haven't done a lot of FE stuff since Scotty died. I understand. But uh, the passion's still there. I spent a lot of years with Scotty and FE. Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then a commercial, these are rental cars that that uh, most of these guys are driving. So if you guys have anything for driving FEs or spec racers, or we've even got a couple GT2 cars. Indeed. Car number 11 is coming up in the next race. Yep. He used to drive an FE. Yep. And now he's into a GT2. Yep. So I appreciate you guys letting me do this. This is really cool. No problem. <laughs> so thank you much, and we'll see you in August. We'll be here. Well, I have to be here, too. We've still got two more other races to go to uh, Road America. Yep. And then back to Gingerman. Yep. And then we'll be coming here in August, and uh, we still got a bunch of races to go. So anybody interested in running a car and learning about this stuff, come stop by and see us. All right. I appreciate it. Al Hosteller from Alliance Auto Spur. Appreciate your, appreciate your expertise. Thanks, Al.